Okay, so I uh, wanted to give you a quick tour of a block explorer. What does that mean? So Bitcoin is a public network. That means that the data on the blockchain is public. If you're running a Bitcoin core node, you have all of the data stored on your disk. Um, but just because your data is on the disk doesn't mean that it's easy to see, it's easy to navigate, it's easy to search over. You'd basically have to run your own tools locally to be able to do that. Um, instead, what's really common if you want to see data information, um, what's in a block, look up a transaction, you use a website called a block explorer. These are usually run by companies that have built out indexes and fancy like UIs on top of all the block data that everyone has on their nodes. So again, they might add some extra data like the mempool.space, which is what I'm looking at currently on, you can see it in the background. Um, mempool.space also includes information about what the current mempool is doing which is useful for figuring out how much it's gonna to cost to get a transaction to a, into a block, etc. Great, okay, so let's take a quick tour through mempool.space. Um, you see this, like, first thing you see is this line. Everything to the left are transactions that are waiting to get into a block. Everything to the right are blocks that have already been mined. So these are kind of their estimate or their guess about what is gonna be in the next block. Um, so you can click into this. Um, they're just guessing. So these are the transactions they think are going to go in there. Um, we're at a very high feed period currently. So if you hover over this, you'll notice this one's paying almost $5,000 in fees. That's a lot. Um, but if you look at these smaller ones, it's costing about $13 to get a smaller normal size transaction into the blockchain. So um, it's like $30 on the higher end. I think if you get like, wow, yeah, that's really high. Uh, 50 to $30 on the high end for these small little transactions. Okay, um, cool. So this is what the next block looks like. Um, you can click into the block that just got mined. So block 822,144. Um, tells you some information about the block itself. So this is all kind of from the block header, plus some information that mempool.space is pre-computed for us about how many how much got paid in fees in this versus how much they earned in subsidy. It's incredible that, um, that's, yeah, that's cool. Okay, um, how big the block was, how much weight it has, et cetera. This is a pretty full block, I think. Um, they do something where they have, a mempool.space does a thing where they have like what they expected the block to look like versus what it actually looks like. So that's what we're looking at here. These are just the transactions that actually ended up in the block, and these are the ones that they would have expected. Um, and Mempool tries to like kind of annotate why they think it didn't end up in the block. Like this one, it says it was broadcast recently, so maybe it didn't get to the miner in time to get included. What's this blue one say? Oh, it says this one, they're saying the miner added, and they don't know why, so it wasn't in here. It wasn't in the Mempool, I think, before it went in. So this is pretty cool. It's like a nice audit of what miner is including and why. Um, all right, uh, what else is going on? Cool, and then if you scroll down farther, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. Oh, this has to do with this top thing. Use quick details. Oh, this is the details about the block. Okay, if you scroll down farther, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of transaction data. Um, here on the right, these red, Things are like, hey, we're spending this. This is a spend. Um, here on the left, these are outputs that have already been spent and greener ones that still haven't been spent yet. So if you click on this, it'll go to the next transaction that spent that output that you clicked on. So you have inputs on the left, outputs on the right. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> um, it makes a sound every time a new block comes through. So mempool.space is letting us know a new block has been added forever to the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, let me hop back really fast. Cool. Um, Great, yeah, so then if we click into one of these transactions, this one has one input, one output. I think this is how much it's spent in fees, about $29 at today's prices. Um, tells us it has two confirmations. They overpaid by three times, oops. Um, and then if we scroll down, we can get more details about the kind of script that was used, the witness data, the type of um, script that it's being locked up to, etc. So that's pretty useful whenever you need to browse um, the Bitcoin ecosystem. Oh, one final thing I should cover before we go away is that up here in the corner, you can go to Signet and you can also hop over to Testnet. 
Um, so these are places where coins have no value. Um, but you can t try things out on the network without too much extra hassle. Um, great. Okay, that's all I've got.